Hi there everybody, welcome back to the channel. We're going to talk about uh, putting an electric motor on your kayak. Now, most of this information is probably going to pertain to just Pennsylvania, as your own Fish and Boat Commission might have their own laws depending on what state you're in. But for the most part, if you title and register your boat or kayak, it is uh, reciprocated in the other states in Canada. So this is a little more in-depth and a little more pricey than just getting a launch permit for your kayak. And launch permits for kayaks are only for uh, man-powered kayaks. So if you're going to paddle it only, launch permit's fine. And for two years, I think it's like $24 or $26. And you get your sticker right there, and you can just go use your uh, kayak within five minutes of leaving the store after getting your launch permit. Now, this is obviously a lot more in-depth and requires different things for uh, using an electric motor in a kayak. Now the first thing you should probably think about is where are you going to store this stuff when you're not using your kayak. For me, I uh, made a little cubby spot in our uh, garage, so I have a whole shelf dedicated just putting all this stuff on, and I have a little lip that I can attach and mount the trolling motor to. So I have a nice little storage spot, it keeps it out of the way, and it's kind of easy access to get whenever you're getting ready to go out for the day. And the next thing you want to think about is the uh, weight capacity of your kayak. Now my kayak is a uh, Jackson Kilroy DT. It is a tandem kayak for two people. Most of the time it's just me and my camera, but obviously uh, I can take my wife or the kid or someone else with me and we can paddle around and enjoy the day. Now for me, the capacity is 550 pounds and most fishing kayaks, even if they're single person kayaks, they're still gonna have about 450 to 550 pounds of capacity. So you should have plenty of space in it to mount your uh, transom and electric motor and a battery and everything. We're just gonna run down uh, what's in my kayak for the weight capacity. So you can plan ahead if you have a two person kayak like me to know what your capacity for people is. So for the weight budget, I put in for the first seat is 250 pounds, and the second seat is 250 pounds. And that leaves about 50 pounds left for gear, the motor, and everything else. Now, I budgeted seven pounds for camera gear if I have a second person in there, a second adult. The rudder attachment is half a pound. The motor is 23 pounds. The battery is 13 pounds. Now, I specifically went with a lithium uh, battery for this so that it wasn't as heavy as like a deep cycle lead acid battery and it is a uh, 12 volt 50 amp battery and it weighs about 13 pounds an equivalent lead acid battery would be about 25 to 30 pounds so saving half the weight uh, really really helps out as you'll see here in a second the battery box itself is three pounds the transom for the trolling motor itself is four pounds and that brings the grand total to 550 pounds exactly. So we're like right on the edge of max capacity with two people in this kayak. Should be okay, been there before, so I'm not too worried about it. When it comes to the paperwork that you need to title and register your kayak, uh, you do not have to title your kayak if it is shorter than 14 feet in Pennsylvania. Now the title itself, to fish and game is only, I think, $30. And you only have to do it once. You don't have to do it every couple of years or anything. It's just one and done. But if you title your boat, your kayak, it has to be permanently titled if you sell it to somebody for the foreseeable future of the lifetime of that boat. You can't just like take the title off. But it's very useful if you want to prove that you own that boat if you ever you know get robbed or stolen or someone takes your boat. So this is something else that I needed. I needed a letterhead from Jackson Kayak with the serial number of my kayak. Right here is the serial number. And all the information from Jackson themselves, I contacted them through customer support and they just sent this to me probably within an hour. They were super helpful and I really appreciate that. To find your uh, hull ID or your serial number for your kayak, it'll be on the back of your boat, on the right side if you're standing behind it. But also the important reason that you need this is it says the propulsion type human or electric. If it doesn't have electric on there, you might not be able to get your uh, kayak registered so that you can use an electric motor on that and not run into any problems with the government. And if you're like me, I bought this kayak secondhand, so I do not have any paperwork for it. So I had to go on the Fish and Boat website and print out 
form PFBC 734, which is an affidavit of purchase and ownership, as you can see here. I had to put on where I bought it from, their address and phone number, information about the kayak, including the serial number, the boat length, the purchase date, the purchase of a price, and everything else with my address and whatnot. And then, of course, you have to also go on the Fishing Boats website and print out Rev 336. This is the application of Pennsylvania's boat registration and boat title. Fill all your information out on this as well. Now, you're going to have to follow a little code in paper that tells you, you know, what kind of prop it is, what kind of electric it is, if it's gas, diesel, the haul material, all that stuff. And you'll fill it out on your uh, boat data section down here using the numbers and the drop downs. Then you also have to include how much you paid for the boat. Now this is important, if you still have the receipt and you bought it from an actual business like I did, save your receipt so you can prove that you paid tax on that purchase. Because I did not have that receipt, so I had to pay 6% that I already, I know I paid before, but I didn't have any proof that I paid it like five, six years ago. So I had to pay the $66 of tax again whenever I filed this. So for this, we have $66 for the tax, $26 for the registration, and $30 for the titling, which comes to $122 to title, register, and pay the tax on the boat. So for me, since I had all this extra paperwork, I decided to go to a notary service to get this all done and taken care of. So I went to AAA, because uh, on the website for Fish and Boat, it says that they will give you a temporary registration so you can use your boat day one whenever you get all this stuff filed, uh, finalized. I did not know this at the time. Whenever I walked in there, they didn't tell me the price of the uh, processing fee until we were basically ready to slide the card and be done but it was another $45 to get the transaction complete and filed through them. So the grand price came up to $167 to register title, pay tax, and pay the fees to have AAA do the processing for me. Since this is a kayak, you do not have to display the numbers uh, issued to you with your stickers. It is a low volume boat and you're not required to put those on there, but you are required to keep your sticker on there saying it's uh, registration and you have to keep your card with you at all times when using the boat it's just like a car your sticker and registration in a car same thing as in a, in a registered uh, kayak or boat so then we'll go to the total cost the grass ninja was $36 the rudder is $36 the electric trolling motor that was $200 the battery is $168 the battery box is $65, the transom is $140, and the battery charger. You have to use specific battery chargers for lithium deep cycle batteries. You can't just use your typical car battery charger with these. They're not going to be able to charge the battery. Probably damage it as well. But the battery charger is $47. So the cost on all the parts is $691. And the cost and fees is $167 to register it all, as I mentioned. So the total cost for this is $858 for all the parts and paperwork. And you'll hear that price and go, oh my god, that's so much money. And then the kayak itself I bought a couple of years ago. Uh, we've used it a lot, so obviously a good investment. But the kayak itself was $1,100, so we're almost $2,000 in this boat. And everyone might say, well, if you're spending $2,000 on a kayak, why don't you just get a regular boat? But it comes down to a couple of key things. For photography, you want to be silent and quiet, so you don't want a gas uh, motor. For the boat, you're going to have to put on a trailer, most likely, and that needs more storage space than just the kayak hanging on the wall. Uh, you're going to have to use probably fuel in it, like gasoline, oil changes, and two-stroke or four-stroke engines are not cheap at all way more than the cost of a kayak, let alone the boat. Probably the most expensive part of owning a boat is just buying a motor for it. And then you also have to keep in mind, like, uh, kayaks are a lot shallower in the water, so you don't need as much water to float in, so you can get in little nooks and crannies in the lakes and rivers without getting stuck. And if I'm by myself and I have a 16-foot John boat, I don't know how I'm going to get that unstuck without uh, using a lot of swearing and other other activities. So for the grand scheme of things, just for wildlife photography and putting around the weekend, 
an electric kayak is going to be the bee's knees. We'll move on to the next segment of this as we uh, go to put everything in the boat. So for the most part, the uh, assembly and build is pretty straightforward here. Just got to make sure you put your transom on your kayak where you want it to be. Make sure you center it and tighten everything down on the transom bar itself. And then make sure you mark the holes with a nice uh, permanent marker, sharpie, anything like that that'll uh, mark on your hull of the kayak. And as you can see right here, you can see the general location of where the uh, kayak serial number is. So if you need to find yours, it's probably in the same general location. And I was using a 1364th drill bit here to drill the holes, the pilot holes for the uh, uh, transom to be mounted to. Now you'll see my note in the future here, but where I'm drilling right now, uh, those holes don't have any nuts on them on the bottom of the bolts. They pretty much self-tap into plastic, that's why I used a uh, smaller bit than what the bolts for the transom actually are, as there is no access to where the uh, ends of the bolts were. With a quick test fit, everything lines up perfectly. And I put the rubber bushings on the bottom between the uh, transom and the kayak this way it doesn't produce any weird vibrations and kind of makes it a little more quieter these uh, these also did come in the uh, kit with the bolts and the transom itself when you're at this step don't tighten everything down all the way just put it in just enough to hold everything in place so you can finish assembly of the transom to the kayak and tighten it all down at once later on front four bolts for the transom mount have nuts on the bottom of them that have uh, self-sealing nuts that way they aren't going to loosen themselves. And here we tighten everything down on the back side of the kayak as the ends of the bolts are going into the foam float itself so there's no access to put a nut on the back side here. But as you can tell just with the back bolts installed it's pretty pretty on there and it's, it's not going to come off even if you don't have the ability to put nuts on some of them. And with all eight on you can pick up the whole kayak pretty easily with just the transom the kayak itself is 100 pounds, so that's saying something that thing's not going anywhere. It's on there pretty, pretty sturdy. So we're going to get ready and uh, move the tray for the chair in the right position and start loading everything in for a little test fit at home before we end up going to the lake. It's always better to test fit all this stuff before you get out to the lake this way. Obviously, you will have access to all of your tools in case you need to fix or adjust something. And here I'm just tightening the uh, directional clamp. That way, whenever you let go of the motor, it doesn't uh, end up just going all over the place and it stays in the direction you leave it. And a super cool thing about the battery box is as you can see right here there's a USB port on the left side and then you can use that to charge your phone or anything that's USB powered and on the right side there is a 12 volt out so you can charge anything else you might need
and the battery box itself has a 60 amp breaker in it that you can reset with the push buttons and both auxiliary ports also have their own uh, breaker that you can reset with the push button. For the prop install make sure you put your pin in because without that pin it's just not going to turn the prop very well at all and it is a shear pin so that if anything hits the prop the prop will break and hopefully the pin so that you can save your motor need to definitely make sure that whenever you turn your motor on that the blades on the prop is not going to hit the bottom of your kayak whenever you go to turn so that's always a good thing to test out before you get out there in the lake then here we have the ninja blade which is super cool i'm kind of worried it's going to fall off so when i'm done here before we get out to the lake i think i'm gonna put a whole bunch of uh, electrical tape to hold that on there maybe a zip tie or two as someone mentioned in a previous teaser video in a comment so hopefully I don't lose it. It was kind of expensive at $35 for a chunk of aluminum. In the next segment, we're gonna go out to the lake, test it out, see what our top speed is like, and uh, see how it runs for some uh, wildlife photography. Sharp turning uh, definitely requires you to reach behind your back though. Not that you should probably be doing that a lot, but it actually backs up really nice in reverse. You don't have to turn as much, but I guess that's because we're at the back of the boat. I found an app on the Android store called GPS Speedometer, and we're gonna use that to see how fast these different uh, speed modes go. We are going to just go across uh, Porter's Cove here to the other side and just turn around. This isn't gonna be super scientific, but we're just gonna try and get like an average speed. And right now the water is like super flat. There's just nobody here, there's no wind. It's like a perfect day to test some, uh, some speed on a, on a kayak. But first we're gonna go back and get the camera. I think for the most part, I'll probably just be using uh, 
speed number three. That honestly seems to be plenty fast enough. Okay, we're just gonna coast in, tip the motor. And dock like butter. Okay, let's get the camera and tripod. So first speed test is gonna be setting number one. So on speed one, we're looking at about two miles an hour. Now we're on speed two. It's not exactly the most accurate way to measure speed, but saying about three miles an hour. Okay, so let's jump to uh, number three. You can definitely feel that kick of power pushing you. Yeah, it says about, th about four miles an hour. Let's just go right to number five and see what that looks like. Ooh, a little bit of a kick there. Yeah, we're looking at about 5.5 miles an hour. It feels a lot faster than that, I can tell you what. So let's uh, make a cheapy little video on the phone, just so I can show you what this looks like from my point of view, since all the cameras are in use. Definitely chugging along. So if you happen to go into a no wake zone, you should probably slow down with this motor. And there's also four lights on top that tell you your uh, battery uh, amount. That will only work if you uh, have a like a lead acid battery. We're using a lithium battery and lithium gives you the same amount of power consistently until it's dead. So there's no like curve of the dying battery for the motor to read. So that motor will read uh, the four or five bars on top until the battery is completely dead. So if you're using a lithium battery, just keep an eye on your uh, usage. Now you can buy uh, like a display to tell you the battery capacity as you're out. But personally, I don't really think I'm going to drain this battery because a lot of my photography ends up being just sitting, watching, maybe going slow. Like if you just put the motor on like one and you just get going in the right direction and let go, it'll just do its thing. You probably have to tighten your uh, directional nut on this so that it doesn't uh, change directions by itself from the torque on the motor for the side of the kayak. And even on like the first speed, it's a pretty, pretty gentle push. It's definitely quieter than uh, using a paddle. And for photography, it's going to be a lot easier to let the motor run on like a low speed like this and just sit here and scan the horizon looking for wildlife or birds and stuff. This is honestly going to make my life so unbelievably easier in the kayak. Just sitting here putting around, not having to do any physical work, enjoying nature. Man, I should have done this a long time ago. Now we're going through some weeds. So, let's see how well that uh, blade cutter works. Definitely seems to work pretty good, but you have to keep the motor RPM up so that way you can slice up the stuff stuck to the prop. Since we entered it kind of slow, it didn't really do a great job. Ugh, got water down my arm and it's 30 degrees out. <laughs> Actually, most of the uh, weeds aren't even on the prop. The prop's pretty clean. It's really just on the front, on the, on the trolling motor uh, stem, on the stem itself of the motor, it's uh, got it all wrapped up on it. Super easy to uh, pick up and lower though. I really like that. Let's get out of these weeds. Now I feel like a lot of people are going to ask 
how much uh, kayak hole is still sticking out of the water. So we're just going to do this real quick so you can see how much we got. Since with just me in here, a lot of the weight is in the back. But as you can see with my scientific measurements, we still got about five or six inches of a hole sticking out of the water, so it's not really weighing it down that much. There's really not a lot of uh, torque being applied to the kayak uh, under speed five, so you don't really need to like balance the boat with your weight because of the torque pushing. But on speed five, you can definitely feel it, but it's not, it's not gonna like throw you out of the boat or anything ridiculous. Okay, so according to this wonderful app that I have, uh, we uh, had a max speed of five miles an hour with an average of four. We covered a distance of two of 0.27 miles in a little bit less than four minutes. There is no way I'd be able to do that with just paddles alone. And if I tried, I'd be so dead, I wouldn't even be able to pick up the camera to do anything. So let's just have a little recap on everything we've learned since trying this out. If you're going to go through weeds, make sure you have a, uh, the motor on one of the higher speed settings. That way you can just like push through it because it will build up on the front of the motor, on the, on the trolling motor mast. And the, the, the grass dingy works really good. Nothing was stuck to the, to the prop itself. Nothing got inside there. So that was pretty nice. The only time you really got to worry about balancing the kayak a little bit is on the, like, sp the max speed of five. And, uh, you know, it's not even that bad. You can just feel it a little bit. It's just like, it's almost like someone just moving around the kayak a little bit. Nothing crazy. With lithium batteries, you're going to uh, not be able to use the top of the motor for uh, telling how, how much juice is left. So always keep your paddles in your boat. Even on a regular boat with a gas engine, you're required to keep a paddle in there. And I have my paddles tucked down inside here, uh, underneath the side, so they're not going to go anywhere, and they're always there, and I, don't have to, I won't accidentally forget them at home. And uh, this thing covers some distance that you wouldn't normally be able to, so you'll be able to see more ground and more wildlife, hopefully. And that it's really easy to tip the motor up and down. You just got to press this little lip right here and just push forward, or sorry, go like this, a squeezing motion push the lip back against the motor and just tilt it pretty easy and then you can still you know go slowly through some shallow areas if you have to nothing too crazy now whenever you go to turn you really got to push it way out or pull it right behind you if you want to do a sharp turn but a normal you know graceful turn it's not too bad I think probably the only negative I can think about this whole like physical setup so far is I wish the handle stuck out a little bit further like out to here so I could just go like this instead of reaching behind me so maybe in the future I'll get like a an extension for on here that's probably just like a personal thing depending on how your kayak is set up and where it's at so that's really about it honestly there's plenty of capacity left in this for a, a second person up to 250 pounds especially if I end up losing weight there'll be more capacity <laughs> And as you can see, maybe, I don't know if it's showing up on the camera, but it's starting to snow a little bit. This year, in the spring, summer, and fall, especially in the springtime, once the uh, wildlife starts returning, like the ducks and the waterfowl, I am super excited to get out in this thing, because right now there's really not a whole lot of uh, animals out, especially in the wintertime. It's super overcast. Even if I wanted to take pictures, I'm at, like, what am I at here? I'm at 1640 second F63 and ISO 6400. It is so dim out today. So if you are looking forward to seeing some wildlife action this summer in this, uh, this setup, uh, subscribe to the channel and let me know if you have any suggestions of areas around Pittsburgh to go uh, put, put the kayak in and go check out some uh, waterfowl or ducks, wildlife, birds, whatever. Always looking for some new places to check out. And if you see me out and about, don't be afraid to say hi. So if you found this whole long video uh, super useful for uh, setting up your kayak for an electric motor, titling, registration, how to put it all together, what parts you need, the whole jazz, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell notification so you know the next time I post something. 
and then I'll, uh, I'll see you out there on the lake, hopefully. Don't let the temperatures scare you away from shooting things you really enjoy. I'll see you.